Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we are going to continue the implementation of our courses store. So our goal is to add some state management features to our Angular application. We want to be able to load the courses and keep the list of courses in memory for whenever we need it, without having to fetch it back from the backend multiple times as we navigate through our application. We also want to make the list of courses available via a courses observable that we have defined here. As we have learned in the previous lessons, while we were building our messages service and our loading service, the best way to define a custom observable in Angular is to use a private behavior subject. So we are going to be using the same technique here. Let's make this a new behavior subject and let's pass in here the parametric type that identifies the values emitted by this subject, which are going to be course arrays. We are going to be passing here as the initial value emitted by this subject, the empty array. This subject is then going to be used to create our courses observable. We are going to derive here from the subject using the as observable method a new observable that emits the same values as the subject but the consumers of the service will not have access to the subject because it's private this means that the consumers of the service will be able to subscribe and receive new values of our courses list without having the ability of emitting new values themselves so the ability of emitting new values for our courses observable is encapsulated and kept private inside our courses store the first thing that our courses store will need to do is to load the courses from the backend and emit them via the courses observable so for that we are going to be injecting directly here the angular http client we will also be needing other things to implement our courses store. We will need the ability of showing a loading indicator to the user. So let's go ahead and inject here the loading service. And we will also need the ability of showing errors to the user. So let's go ahead and inject here also the messages service. In our constructor, whenever the store gets initialized for the first time, we are going to be calling here a new method that we are going to be calling load all courses. Let's go ahead and implement this method that we want to keep private to our courses store. So this method will not be accessible to anywhere else in our application, meaning that the courses are only going to be loaded from the backend once at application startup time. In order to fetch the courses from our backend, we're going to be using here the Angular HTTP service and we're going to do an HTTP GET call. We're going to be hitting the endpoint slash API slash courses. Let's define here the expected return type so we would expect to receive from the backend a list of courses. The actual response from the backend is going to include an object containing a payload property which will then provides us with a list of courses. So let's go ahead and using the RxJS pipe syntax, let's apply here the map operator and let's take the HTTP response and let's extract from it the response payload. If something goes wrong whenever we are doing a call to our backend, we also want to add here some error handling. So let's go ahead and apply here the RxJS catch error operator. And here we are going to be adding the same error handling functionality that we have explained in detail before. I'm going to paste in here the implementation and let's review it together. So we are going to be defining a new error message, could not load courses. We are going to show it to the user using the messages service. We are also going to log the error message to the console together with the original technical error that the user might not be able to understand. So that's why we are not going to be showing it on the error messages panel. We are only going to be showing the user friendly could not load courses. We are also returning here via throw error an observable that is going to error out the observable chain with the same error cause. Let's now assign this observable to a new variable that we're going to be calling load courses. 
We are now going to be adding some loading indicator capabilities to this observable. Let's call here the loading service and let's call show loader until completed and let's pass it the load courses observable. We are going to get back here a new observable with loading indicator capabilities. So the loading indicator is going to be shown whenever we subscribe to the output observable and the loading indicator is going to be hidden when the observable finishes its life cycle. Now if we don't subscribe to this observable nothing will happen so let's go ahead and subscribe here to the output observable. So now we are retrieving the courses from the backend but we are not yet saving them somewhere in memory. Now, in order to do that, we are going to be using the subject. So what we want to do is whenever we get the data from the backend, we want to call subject.next and emit that data to any part of the application that might be interested in receiving it, such as, for example, our home component. So we are going to be doing that as a side effect of our observable chain here after catch error. So if no error occurred, then we are going to be receiving here at this point of the observable chain, our list of courses. Let's go ahead and call our subject. We're going to call next on it and we're going to have it emit this new list of courses that we received from the backend. Like we have seen before, this is going to be done only at service construction time. So this will happen only once during the application lifecycle. This method is private, so it cannot be called elsewhere in the application multiple times. We are now at this point in the course almost ready to try out our first state management solution. However, if we would try to load our application as it is, we would see an error in the console. Switching here to a larger window where the application has already been started, we can see that this has crashed and we have here the error no provider for loading service. So let's try to understand what is going on here and let's fix this issue. Going back here to our application, what is happening is that this courses store service, which is a global singleton, needs instances of the loading service and of the messages service in order to be able to work. Now, the only instances that we have on our application defined for these two services are the ones available, for example, at the level of our application root component. So if we open here our application root component, we are going to see that we have here one instance of each of these services. Now, the problem is that these services, because they were defined here, the level of the application root component are only visible to the application root component and other child components. They are not visible to global singletons such as the courses store service. So how can we fix this? Instead of defining these services here at the level of the application root component, we are going to open here our application root module and we are going to define two instances of these services here in the providers property of the application root module. So we're going to be defining here the loading service and we are also going to be defining here the messages service. And if we now try this out, our application is going to work as expected. Let's wait here for the reload. Let's keep an eye here for the loading indicator. So here it is. And the courses have been loaded via our courses store. So now if we navigate here to the about page and we go back to the home component, we are going to see that immediately we are going to be displaying on the screen the list of courses. We didn't see here any loading indicator. I'm going to do this again. We are now on the about page. Let's go back to the main page. And as we can see, no loading indicator was activated because the data was fetched directly from our courses store instead of having to trigger a new backend call to get the same data again from our backend. If we now try to edit the course using the edit course dialog, let's say that, for example, we are going to change here the value of the title. If we now click on save, we're going to see here the loading indicator to save the data in our backend. And we are back here to the home component. 
but notice that because our course dialog is not yet using state management, the new value of the title has not been reflected in our user interface. So we have here a data inconsistency that would cause some confusion to the user. We can see the new data by refreshing here our application. The data has been now fetched again back from the backend. So in the next few lessons, we are going to learn how to add state management also for data modification operations. At this point in the course, it's important to understand, going back here to our application code, that there are still two instances of loading service and two instances of messages service in our application. For example, taking the loading service, we have here one instance at the level of the root of our application that is also visible at the level of our application root component. So this instance here defined in our application module is going to be available here to the messages and loading component of the application root component. But besides this, we also have separate instances of loading service and messages service that are local to the dialog. And with this, we have the initial version of our courses store up and running. As we can see, this technique using behavior subject is very flexible. It's a very simple way of adding lightweight state management to your application without introducing a lot of code and other third party libraries. Let's now finish the implementation of our state management solution for our courses list. We are going to next talk about data modification operations.